but I walked in the room and I saw her, this segment, and the first time in my entire life, I felt the hairs on my legs prick up. I've always felt the hairs on my arms prick up, like, as normal. It went down my spine and my leg hairs stood on end when I saw her. Hey hunters, before we deep dive into my Egypt adventures, I wanted to shout out the sponsor of this video, which is History Hit. It's basically Netflix for history geeks. History Hit brings you the stories that shaped the world through their award-winning podcast network and online history channel. They have hundreds of programs, over a thousand podcast episodes, and 5,000 history-related travel articles. And every week they launch 15 new podcast episodes and two new programs, so you're not sure on stuff to watch. So if like me, you spend most of your spare time researching and consuming ancient history content, then I would definitely check this out because it is right up mine and your street. I'll pop a link in the description if it sounds like something you fancy. And if you want to subscribe, then don't forget to use my code FUNNYOLDWORLD because then you'll get 50% off for three months. That's a lot of history content for half the amount. We've come to um, a part of Karnak that's off limits. It's where the statue of Sekhmet uh, is. You're not allowed to come here, but we've snuck, snuck in. And I just had the most crazy experience. So um, when the workers the, who discovered her, whatever well, no, they did a couple hundred years ago, when they discovered her, everyone was freaking out. They really, she really scared and freaked out the workers. Um, people, it, the reason why it's locked off now and it's locked is because locals swore, uh, Sekhmet is a lion, um, locals would swear that she would move and that they would see a lion or a dark cat running around Karnak at night. So eventually they, they locked it off. Anyway, just went inside. We went in a small group. It's completely dark inside apart from the little bit of light that shines on Sekhmet. I'm not particularly sensitive to energies and things like that, but I walked in the room and I saw her this segment and the first time in my entire life I felt the hairs on my legs prick up I've always felt the hairs on my arms prick up like as normal it went down my spine and my leg hairs stood on end when I saw her like that was crazy I can only imagine what it would have been like thousands of years ago when this whole site was properly being activated all of the energy the the location of Karnak is quite special. You'll see uh, later on that the trees here don't grow up, they grow along the ground. There's something weird going on with the energy, whether it's on a ley line, probably is. The ancients knew what they were doing. But that was the, probably the most intense, like, oh, a flying. <laughs> that was the most intense, like, esoteric experience I've ever had in an ancient site. Um, very visceral, I can't believe it. My legs, my spine, everything went wrong. I wasn't the only one that experienced something incredibly unusual meeting Sekhmet. Other people in the group also felt a strange sense of electric energy, or pins and needles, or buzzing, and I don't know what to call it, buzzing energy. Others in the group didn't feel anything at all, but they saw things. They saw the statue change colour or glow, even move, blink, smile for a split second. And it wasn't just the humans that were picking up some sort of unusual activity in this space. Our technology did too. Cameras started doing really weird things when we attempted to film or take photos of her. It was going crazy. And when I go next to it, it flat lines. There's no light. Nothing. Look. It's absorbing energy. It's absorbing the light. It wow. literally is, because the only way I can take pictures with this is if the light bounces off you and comes to me, and yeah. then I adjust it manually. But here, it's fantastic. all the light is gone. So she just sucks all the energy, all the light, yeah. I, I don't, it's the stone, the positioning, and this was opened at 2.0. This is one of the- Wide open? Wide open, yeah. At 3,200 ISO. Wow. Which is Big. Like ridiculous. Yeah. And nothing, like absolutely nothing on the Instagram. This spike here is what you see from the sides mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. are coming. So literally, all I was seeing in the camera is a cycle. 
because she just took nothing. Wow. I'm just smiling because I don't know what to think. It's not the room darkness. I know this because I took this picture, which was right outside it. She's a perfect black body. Yeah. Right outside it, and you can see I was able to get some kind of light spectrum. Yes, but in the, when you go into when the When I room. go in the room, all hell breaks loose. I get nothing. Yeah. Like absolutely nothing. In all of them, I took like maybe 20 pictures of them. And it's all the same. And that's the crazy thing. With this, if I literally move one step, the light frequency changes. Yes. And this, from multiple angles, yes. I was getting the same thing. It was so freaky. I mean, this, I was right behind you. I used you. You see? The yeah. light is reflecting off your head. Yeah. But when I go next to it, there's nothing. And this this little spike here yeah. is showing the light here. Wow, oh, dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. So safe. What did you experience when you went in? Because you went in before me yeah. to Sekhmet. You were the first one in. What did you experience? So like as soon as I kind of walked into the room, uh, everything was pretty much pitch black until I got to see the statue. Like my body started vibrating, not in a kind of shaky nerve sense, more in the sense of there was like a current going through me. And then when more people started coming into the room, it, it faded away. But as I stared at her in the eyes, I kind of got tunnel vision and her, a portion of her face started glowing like a luminescent green. And everything around just went kind of black. Yeah, it was an interesting experience. Have you ever experienced anything like that before? No, and I'm not one to like believe in something unless I see like physical evidence or I experience it myself. Yeah, okay. So having this experience just kind of changed my entire perception of pretty much being here in Egypt and experiencing all of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not only that, another member of our group tried to take a photo on an iPhone camera. They accidentally took a flash photo first and then a split second later took one without the flash. What's weird is the one with the flash completely whited out the screen. Cameras are not supposed to do this unless they have an extreme source of light going into the lens, like a strobe light from up close. There was no light in the room. This room is pitch black, bar a tiny pool of light that's coming from a small square in the ceiling that is constant and unchanging. Where did this light source come from that completely whited out the iPhone camera? When we got back to the hotel, we started to analyze all of the photos that we'd taken of Sekhmet and look for any kind of anomalies or if there's anything weird. We noticed an image that was showing something really bizarre. It looks almost like two images superimposed one on top of the other. We've tested the camera and we've tested the photo and this is not the case. The camera literally could not focus on Sekhmet the statue. It created almost like a double vision of her. There's also a light source, as you can see on her lower left arm. This white area here, this light is reflecting something that was not a flash and was not the sunlight that was in the room. We can't understand where this white, bright light source is coming from. Now, the statue is made from, I believe, either granite or diorite, which has a high crystal content. Now, interestingly, crystal is starting to be studied and recently they found out that it could hold data. You could literally store data inside crystals. Are we just at the very beginning of understanding just how cool and important crystal as a stone is? And maybe the ancients already had the monopoly on this kind of technology and they knew that crystal stone had the capability to do all kinds of cool stuff that we are only just beginning to think about is from the reflection of these little crystals. Mm -hmm. The fine granite, in the, yeah. in the, which makes okay. it fine granite. But there was, you weren't using a flash. This is a flash, a flash and this is no flash. This is no flash. So why is the This light... is what's confusing yeah. myself and the people there. Because he's saying, if you've taken this with a flash, which angle did you angle it and everything? I was like, you know my camera. I took the, uh, I took the mirrorless camera, the has no size. flash. And you can see, with the flash, I mean, you can see this. He, it has the shadow around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a shadow around mine. No, you're right. Yeah. Like there's nothing. You're right. I have one, two, three. I have a kind of a overlap. And the strange thing is, I have overlaps everywhere. Honestly, it was 
when when the people were coming out and I started seeing their faces, I was like, is it hot inside or whatever? <laughs> so I went in expecting just to see a statue, expecting to see another temple. Like we've seen all the like way we've through. Seen all the way yeah. Through. My the hair on my arm was standing up after five seconds. Yeah. I couldn't focus the camera on the thing. That really, really stressed me out because this is something I can control. I've been doing this for a very long time. I could not do what I'm comfortable in doing. And then this hand on I'm not making this shit. <laughs> the thing smiled at me. Yeah. When uh, NXT told me to step over the line and just look at it, it just, I, I think just went up. It just smiled at me. That really terrified me. It was scary, yeah. It was terrifying. And I do not believe in any of this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Blew my mind. Now, I hear you. I know what you're saying. Statues can't move. <laughs> stone cannot move. In our concept of what we know in the world with the rules of quantum physics, stone cannot move. So it must be a trick of the light, right? It must be some sort of phenomenon that happens because of the location, the story, the light setup, I don't know. We're, we're trying to work this out. One theory that did pop into my head though, and just roll with me on this one, is that Karnak, the site, the ancient temple site, is a, it's very specifically placed just there. As all ancient sites are in the world, they're on very specific hotspots for energy points, ley lines, if you want to call them that, or electromagnetic anomaly centers. Maybe, just maybe, the ancients were specifically building their sites on these places for reasons other than simply religious. Maybe they were functional as well. If you're into dimension theory and anything like that, I wondered whether or not Karnak was on some sort of weak spot between dimensions, maybe, possibly, and maybe Sekhmet is literally on the, the centerfold of two or multiple dimensions. And just for a split second, people are able to like hop or pass between the dimensions. Anyway, that's what I sort of had in my head. I was like, that makes more sense to me and be more scientifically plausible with dimension theory than the stone physically coming to life and moving. Then what was weird was when we look back at the photograph, the iPhone photo, that had the flash and then a split second later, within the same second, had the non-flash. What was interesting was the flash photo had recorded a different geographical location than the non-flash photo. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to uh, explain that because they were standing in the same place in the same second. So how can your location move? But weird that I spotted that after I had a little thought about dimension theory. The lines of the walls. That's what makes me think it's like you've managed to take a photo of two slightly of different walls. dimensions or something. That you've managed to like, you she's see existing in a plane of like 10 and you've... This is another thing. His picture is actually a really good picture. I'm going to send it to them. This is this line. This is this line. This is that line. It's doubled. This is this line. No, no, it's exactly the same. Oh. It's just his is not picking up all the contours. Oh, so the background is not uh, is not phased because look you can see it either way this this on top he's even oh, this yeah, black smudge oh, it is a two. Yeah, okay. this black smudged is not doubled and this is without the flash i'm picking this up ah uh, yes are you following this because i was studying this yesterday all night to see where i got these effects from mm. but i didn't see it in the other ones because they didn't take it with the flash right this one was taken with the flash so all of this is showing as bright as your camera with the flash when I was in pitch dark. But where did I get the reflections of light here? I have no idea. Well, it's the light source of her, but not of the, the light source is coming out from her. That's and the I'm sun is continuous. Yeah. There's no clouds. The sun is a continuous stream. No, 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 there was no, no like the sun came in and out. No. The light source that's lighting this up in a pitch black room is coming out from her. That's crazy. I mean, that's that's what I'm thinking. The light source. There's a light source right she's here. She's the light yeah. source. Look, there's a light source right here and he has filled the room with flash. We have the aperture up above her. Yeah, but it's not gonna account for this. I haven't quite worked out what the hell's going on with Sekhmet, but I do know that I need to go back. I need to investigate this. I wanna bring back more tech that can measure maybe light sources in the room, atmosphere, like let's just bring everything. Let's bring everything there and do a full on investigation of Sekhmet. I'm down. Do you want to come with me? I am going back to Egypt next year. That's March, 2023. 
and the books are open. If you would like to join me and go and explore Sekhmet with me, then I'll pop the link in the description. You can join the tour, join the gang, and let's go hunt ancient technology and also ancient weird energy dimension stuff. See you there.